This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and boy, I'm stoked about this one. This is the Dell Inspiron 7000 Gamer Series. So it's model 7559. And why am I stoked? Because folks are always asking for like a really great gaming laptop under $1,000. There just aren't really many that have good dedicated graphics and a quad-core CPU. Well, this one, the price keeps going down on it, and currently you can get the configuration that we have, which is pretty decent spec for a starter gaming laptop, for $750. And that's with a spinning hard drive, which isn't the fastest thing, but if you go spend $50 more, you can get it with a 256 gig SSD. We'll talk about the configurations and stuff. Anyway, 15.6 inch Full HD IPS display, 4K is available optionally. It's almost six pounds. This is not a lightweight. Now, because this is a lot cheaper than, say, Dell's XP, S15 or their Alienware laptops, you're not going to get cream a crop of everything, but really the core specifications, the things that count are here, and it's a fairly upgradable machine. So you can actually, well, upgrade it. And we're going to look at it now. It may be one of the least expensive but good quality gaming laptops you can buy, but that doesn't mean you get all the bells and whistles here. But the important things are here. Quad-core Intel Skylake CPUs, an NVIDIA GTX 960M graphics card with 4 gigs of DDR5 VRAM. Decent Wi-Fi, 8 to 11 ACs on board, a 1080p display that is matte IPS, not bad. And there's a 4K option as well. Backlit keyboard. I, of course, you know, it's not an XPS 15 or one of the other expensive slim guys, so it's not going to be super lightweight. It's somewhere between the XPS 15 and the Alienware 15, also made by Dell in terms of thickness and weight. It's almost six pounds. This guy is not uber portable by any means, but you know, again, for the price is pretty fair. No touchscreen on the 1080p version, but you know, you hardcore gamers don't tend to want touchscreens, it seems. <laughs> And the color gamut's good, but not fantastic on it. Keyboard's pretty good. Key travel, it, despite the one-inch thickness, is not super deep, but it's a very tactile and pleasant keyboard. The trackpad's also decent. Not superb, but reliable, usable. Good audio, subwoofer. There's a lot to like here, especially for the price. And it's robustly built, and it's really easy to open up for upgrades, which we'll show you. Well, this is a gaming laptop that looks pretty much like a gaming laptop. You have your red accents over here, aggressive little dot patterns, highlights on the grills, but it's not like so, so out there. It looks pretty robust, like a lot of gaming laptops, but it's an inch thick. It's not super duper thick, but it's robustly built. So if you're looking for something that can actually handle being tossed around inside your backpack, I'd say this is it. Matte black finish, pretty hard to, to mess with. We've got some beefy hinges here, plenty of ventilation going around on the back here. By the way, this is available in matte black with red accents or hibiscus red. How interesting that they decide to use such a nice feminine flower name with black accents. And as we open it up, you can see there's the hinge. It's pretty, it's pretty big. Now, this is just a standard laptop. It doesn't yoga. It doesn't bend in interesting ways. So it doesn't have fancy hinges on it. If you take a look at the sides, you're not going to get ultra cutting edge ports like Thunderbolt 3. That, that comes with more expensive machines, no USB-C even. But all of the standard ports that you need for today are pretty much here, except for a mini display port. But you do have HDMI at least. Port selection is pretty decent on this. There's where we plug in the, the power connector. This is the well, obviously ventilation here, stylish with a little red and black going on. Two USB 3.0 ports, a combo headphone jack, and uh, excuse me if you can see hear the cat howling in the background. He sees another cat outside and he's just real excited. And on this side, we have a Kensington lock slot. This is gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI 1.4. So that can drive a 4K display, but it's HDMI 1.4. So that should be at 30 hertz, not at 60 hertz, for those of you who care. Another USB 3.0 port and the SD card slot. And here, the underside, it's nice that they have little design touches here. Like, even the rubber feet across the bottom have a little zing of color there. But what really excites me isn't just the subwoofer down here. And this has pretty good sound, honestly. we got plenty of ventilation. It doesn't get hot except this spot right here. The rest of the laptop is between... 80 and 94 degrees Fahrenheit, so well below body temperature. It won't ever feel hot. This is the only spot where if you're gaming hard and heavy, Fallout 4, something like that, it'll reach around 107, which compared to some of the slim and light MSI gaming laptops, that ain't nothing. But it's toasty, but that is the spot that falls between your legs, so 
hopefully you won't feel it. But anyway, what excites me here is there's one screw. It's a captive little Phillips head screw. Captive means that after you unscrew it, it's actually going to stay inside the plastic, so it's harder to lose. Unscrew one screw, and you have access to the bottom. Now, one of the reasons why we usually show you a still frame for the guts on laptops is because there's so many little screws, it takes forever to take it apart. But this one's pretty easy, so there it is. Unscrew the screw, and there are your internals. Woohoo! Fan, fan, RAM, RAM, stock, stack RAM slots. We have the 8 gig of RAM model here, so one slot occupied. There is a second slot for RAM. This is the Intel Wi-Fi card. It's the 3165 dual band AC card with Bluetooth. That's Intel's lower end card. Again, for the price, you're not going to get the 82. 60. 74 watt hour battery here, so should you need to service it, you can access it to replace it. That's a bit under Dell's 84 watt hour battery used in the XPS 15. Hard drive right here. The, the base models come with a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. It has 8 gigs of caching memory, so they call that a hybrid drive. It helps it be a little bit faster, uh, but if you can afford it, I recommend putting in an M2 SSD. There's a slot for it there. Or if you spend $50 more, that is $800 instead of our $750 model, you can get one with a 256 gig SSD. That would be SATA 3 interface. No PCIe for this price. Uh, but, you know, if you're a gamer, you probably need big storage for your game. So you probably want an SSD in here, and you can buy one and put it in yourself later if you want. And you probably do want a hard drive for storage. Inside we have a fairly spacious keyboard with a number pad there, loved by gamers and number crunchers alike. A pretty decent key travel, not super deep, nicely damp, though rubbery feel, so your fingers are not going to slip on the keys, but not so rubbery that they get stuck either. This is centered under the space bar of the trackpad, which I do like. Of course, it's obviously off-centered because there is a number pad over there. Trackpad works fine on this. You get the nice little red grill here, the little accent effect. That's where our speakers play out of. And here we have the 1920 by 1080 full HD IPS matte display. Great viewing angles on this. Uh, it's one of the few displays I've seen that's actually warm. Uh, most laptop displays are too cool, bluish, whitish looking. And this one is at 6,000 Kelvin. 6,600 is ideal. A lot of laptop displays are way too high at 7,100 or 7,200. Calibration fixes that. However, this is not a super wide gamut display by any means. This is a budget machine, but it's not terrible. It's 68% of sRGB and 51% of Adobe RGB. Not going to win any awards, but I mean, as you can see, it's actually very pleasing. And contrast is quite good because it has good black levels. At max brightness, black level is 0.29. Usually we see more like 0.4. And that helps. You need a lower black level because brightness is not that high. It's 212 nits of brightness. Helps that it's anti-glare, though, so it's not fighting glare. But it's not a super bright display. It's fine for indoor use. This is not something you're going to be using outdoors. It's pleasing. It's pretty. It doesn't glare a lot. If you turn it off angle, it maintains color nicely. So for the price, I have no issues with it. It's not an nasty TN pal or anything like that. There is a 4K option if you want it, and that's usually bundled with higher end specs on the laptop, including the SSD, the Core i7 versus the Core i5. Both of them are quad core on this. You get the idea. Now we have the base model here, which is interesting because usually laptop manufacturers send us re review loaners that are towards the high end in terms of configurations, but I think Dell's actually pretty proud of what they can do with a low-end machine here. As you saw from the internals, we have 8 gigs of RAM. You could take it up to 16. In theory, you should be able to take it up to 32 if you get 16 gig DIMMs. And we just have that 5400 RPM conventional hard drive in here, no SSD. We have the Core i5-6300HQ, so that's a quad-core i5. A lot faster than a Ultrabook dual-core CPU. You could go for a Core i7, that's about $100 more if you want to move up to the Core i7, but honestly, performance on this is pretty good in terms of CPU. 12.3 seconds to compute Pi in W prime, and here you see our PC Mark 8 score of 3168. That's for the home accelerated test. That's a respectable and competitive score. And there's our Geekbench 3 score, and this is where you'll notice the difference. With a Core i7 quad core, we'd usually see 12,500 or so for the multi core test, and we've got 9,224. If you're playing games, it's got plenty enough processing power, certainly for even RTS games, and those tend to be more processor intensive. 
uh, but still, in case you want to future proof it or you're doing something else, video production, and, and you just want the fastest CPU possible, again, you can get that for $100 more. 3D Mark Fire Strike score there, 31, 39, 31, rather competitive. You know, these scores are going to be a lot like the Dell XPS 15 that we reviewed. It has the same NVIDIA GTX 960M inside. The, our XPS 15 actually had a Core i7. This one has a Core i5. But in terms of graphics numbers, you're not going to see much of a difference between the two of them. And for CloudGate, 12,550. And that's another 3D Mark test. For the old-fashioned 3D Mark 11 score, for the Extreme score, 1832. So it does well. It's competitive, again, with the ASUS ZenBook Pro UX501, the Lenovo Y700. It actually costs a bit more than this. Good stuff. We're going to test out Fallout 4. And so you can see the settings that we're using. We're going with the GeForce Optimized recommended settings there. So it's a mix of, well, mostly medium, but occasionally some ultra and a few lows. Uh, overall, call it kind of somewhere between medium and high. And we're going to see how it plays. And you're going to get to hear the speakers too, which are quite nice. And so here we are somewhere inside of Boston. And obviously, at 60 frames per second, you can see in the corner right there, we could go really to even higher settings. Whoa. plays perfectly well. We're pretty much capped at 60 frames per second. Now one thing I have noticed is if, if you're playing on battery power, it, it, it sets down your, your settings quite a lot. By default, Dell doesn't go for broke. They, they set the CPU and GPU to be pretty wimpy. So you want to go into your power settings if you're running on battery power and gaming. Now granted, you're not going to get a whole lot of battery life if you are gaming on battery, but we'll talk about battery life in a bit now. But anyway, that's Fallout 4. Looking really solid, as you'd expect for a machine with a quad-core CPU and GTX 960M graphics. So how about battery life? Uh, not particularly when gaming, because you know all gaming laptops do not have good battery life when you are playing a game. Uh, using this for productivity work, for editing photos, streaming video, that sort of thing. Dell claims an enormous 11 hours with the 1080p display, or 7 hours if you have the 4K display. It's optimistic, folks. Almost always PC manufacturers are. But it does have a pretty large 74 watt hour battery. Not as big as the XPS 15's larger battery option, but still, uh, we average doing productivity work where it switches to Intel HD integrated graphics. We manage about six, six and a half hours, which for a powerful machine with a quad core CPU, that's pretty good. And especially it will auto switch. So it will occasionally use a dedicated graphics, say if you're launching Photoshop or you're doing video editing or something like that. So unless you override that behavior, it will sometimes use dedicated graphics and not stick to integrated. It has a 130 watt charger that is ample to charge the laptop. It will not drop charge, say if you're running it hard in gaming or exporting video while it's plugged in, it will continue to charge the laptop. So that's the Dell Inspiron 7000 Gamer, model 7559. Again, if you're looking for a gaming laptop on the cheap, but you don't want to get, you know, a slow CPU, not very good dedicated graphics, uh, all sorts of things like that, well, this is the one to really consider strongly. It's one of the best things that I've seen, certainly in this price range, starting at around $750 for a decently configured machine. And even if you go to town and you get the 4K display and, and some things you really might not need on it, if you're going to be using this for gaming, uh, the most you can spend is pretty much around $1,200. It's really very good. And honestly, in the spirit of this machine, I would go for something in the, in the lower tier price range and upgrade stuff after the fact. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.